This little plastic card gives me legal authorization to work for almost any employer in the US, have multiple jobs, and even start my own business. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you what this piece of plastic is, how I got it, and what I'm going to be doing with it. Now, before we continue, I want to make it crystal clear. I'm not an immigration lawyer, and this is only based off my experience and the research that I've done regarding the topic of immigration. Now, if you have any questions, I really strongly recommend you reach out to a lawyer because, again, this is very complicated stuff and you don't want to mess around with things like this. All right, with all that out of the way, this plastic card is called an EA. ID, which stands for Employment Authorization Document, aka a work permit. And what it is, is proof that you can legally work in the US. And by the way, it's like super American, like I've obviously blocked out some information, but like you can see the eagle up here. Behind here is like a Statue of Liberty. Super, super American. It makes me want to like drink beer and drive an F-150. Now there's a bunch of different, I guess, classes of EAD that you can have. But the one that I'm going to be talking about is the derivative of the green card or the C9 derivation of the EAD. So like I said earlier, the work permit or the EAD lets you work for any employer in the US, have multiple jobs, start your own business. And the only jobs that I think are not fair game are things that require security clearance like working for NASA, for example. Now there is a time limit for the work authorization. Mine is good until July of 2029. So five years for my card in particular. And from my understanding, the EAD can actually be renewed, but hopefully fingers crossed, I won't have to get to that situation. Now, some of you might have your investigation hats on and you've probably figured it out by now, but the reason that I have the EAD is because I'm adjusting my status from a TN visa to a green card and getting the EAD or applying for the EAD is part of that process. So for those of you who are new here or need some more context, I was born and raised in Canada. I graduated university with a bachelor's in computer engineering, which qualified me to work in the US under the TN visa, which I now use to work as a software engineer in the US. Through the company that I've worked for, they've sponsored my green card, which has, I guess, led to me right now making this video about the green card and about the EAD. So one important note that I want to make about the TN visa is at the bottom of my card, it actually says not valid for re-entry into the US. That means that this EAD that I have is a standalone EAD or standalone work permit, which brings me to the next topic, which is surprise another card called the AP or advanced parole or travel permit. Now I don't have the advanced parole, so I can't you know, show you, but I can talk about what it is. So what the AP does, it lets you travel legally in and out of the US. Now in my situation, if I were to leave the US, UCIS would determine that my green card application has been abandoned and they would deny my application. This is because I'm adjusting my status from a TN visa, which is single intent. Now on top of that, since applying for a green card or adjusting your status is a clear sign of immigrant intent, it would be pretty much impossible for me to get another Another TN in the future. It is very important and it is a very big deal to not travel if you do not have your advanced parole while you're waiting for your adjustment of status, if you're on a TN visa. Now instead, if you have an H-1B visa, it's a little bit of a different story because the H-1B has dual intent. So while adjusting your status from you know H-1B to green card, you are still able to travel in and out of the US using your H-1B visa. Now again, I'm not a lawyer and I don't have an H-1B, so take what I say with a grain of salt, but, but from what I've read online and from my understanding, if you start to use your EAD to get a new job or start a side business or whatever, it will invalidate your H-1B visa and you'll have to use advanced parole in order to travel. So if you don't have your advanced parole yet and you start to use your EAD to get side income, it could mess with your immigration process. So it's very important to note that and to talk to your lawyer when you're going through the process for H-1B and for TN as well. Now, from what I've seen online, it's very common for employers and for lawyers to file for the advanced parole, the EAD and the AP in one go when applying for your adjustment of status. I've also read that in the past, sometimes your EAD will come as a combo card, which will act as the work permit and the travel permit in one as a combination. Now, if that were the case, the EAD would say specifically at the bottom, instead of not valid for entry to the US, I'll be something along the lines as this serves as advanced parole as well. As we can see, I don't have that distinction. And looking at my case on the USCIS website, I have not seen any movement in my advanced parole case. More research that I've done, the average wait time for 80% of advanced parole cases to be completed is 12 and a half months which is also around the same time estimate that I'm getting for the green card. So for me, that means I'm stuck in the US until I either get advanced parole or I get my green card, but at least I have the work permit, which means that something is happening with my case. Now, most of my core audience is software engineers, so I wanna take a step back and kind of put this into perspective for those viewers who are watching. So for software engineers, there are two main ways that I think that you'll be able to come to the US for a software engineering job. If you're Canadian or you're Mexican, you'll probably get into the US with a TN visa if the degree that you have qualifies for it. If your degree does not qualify for the TN visa, or let's say that you're not from Canada or Mexico, the other way that you'll be getting to the US, for most people, I think, is the H-1B visa. Now, there are other options like getting married to a US citizen or the O-1 visa or the L-1 visa, but I think that these ones are much less common than the H-1B and the TN. But regardless of the TN visa or the H-1B visa, or I guess any of the other visas, the process in which you'll be getting your EAD or your AP is in the last stage of the green card process called the adjustment of status. This last stage is also called the AOS, 
which stands for adjustment of status, or the I-485. Now I'm gonna be making a whole entire video specifically on just the whole entire green card process because I think it needs its own video to do it justice. And make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss it. But in order to get to that last stage of the adjustment of status, your employer needs to do a lot of work and has to file something called the I-140. Now it's important to remember that your green card application, which is the AOS, is tied to your I-140, which is tied to your employer. So while having your EAD in hand means you can work for any employer, any job, you know, side hustle, start your own business, whatever, it does not guarantee that you are gonna get your green card. Your green card is tied to your I-140, which is tied to your employer. So while the EAD is great, it does not necessarily mean that you can just switch jobs. Now, based off my research, and again, I'm not a lawyer, the only way that you can switch jobs while not jeopardizing your adjustment of status is through I-485 AC-21 portability, which is a mouthful. Now, I will link the USCIS website information about this portability clause down in the description. But from my understanding, this clause lets you port over your adjustment of status application to another company after your adjustment of status application has been pending for 180 days. Now, the job that you're porting over to would have to be in the same occupation and in a very similar role to the role that you're currently working. So say, for example, software engineer from Google going to you know Apple, that's probably okay. Software engineer to Yoga instructor, probably not. But having the work authorization or the EAD in hand lets you work as a yoga instructor on the weekends with the caveat that you are still maintaining your working relationship with your employer that filed the original I-140. Now that's pretty confusing because again, immigration is a very confusing topic and I bet that my explanation didn't make it any better. But if you're more curious about this portability, make sure to read the things that I linked in the description. Talk to a lawyer because it's a pretty tricky subject from what I gather. But to make a confusing situation even more confusing, there's another caveat that comes with all this, especially for H-1B visas. Like I said earlier, the H-1B visa is dual intent, which means you can travel in and out of the country while your adjustment of status is pending and while you're waiting for your green card. But the H-1B is only tied to one employer. So say for example, you wanna start Ubering on the weekends, or you want to you know, make your own business or whatever, that's not something that you can do while you're on your H-1B visa. So when you get the EAD, it opens up your options to you know, start an app or be a yoga instructor on the weekends. But it's important to note that once you activate your EAD and start using it, it invalidates your H-1B visa. And if you do not have your advanced parole, that means you can no longer leave the country. Again, I don't really know the specifics past this because I'm not a lawyer and I don't have H-1B, but I think it's important to note. Now, I don't think this is an issue for the teen visa because the only way that you'd be able to leave the country in the first place is if you have the advanced parole. So a moot point for the TN visa. Now, I guess this leads me to the next question, which is what am I gonna be doing with my work authorization, with my EAD? This might be a big surprise, but nothing really. Now, like I said a little bit earlier, there are ways to switch your jobs while you're waiting for your adjustment of status to be completed. But in my opinion, that's too much risk. It's not something that I would risk my green card for. And if I'm being real, it's not something that I'm very interested in at the moment. I really don't wanna complicate things. And I wanna keep things simple. And I also really like my job right now, but I think that's a topic for another video. So for me, I'm just gonna continue on I guess, continuing on. The only additional benefit that I personally have right now is the ability to have side income. So say tomorrow, for example, I have a crazy app idea and I'm able to create the app and market it really well to the point where I'm able to make money. If that were the case, I would legally be able to make money off that app now, whereas in the past, I would not be able to. Having the EAD also opens up the door for monetization on YouTube, but I have not hit the requirements for monetization yet. But if I did in the future meet the requirements for the monetization, I would be able to legally make money off of YouTube in the US. But now let's talk timeline. The overall green card process is very long very stressful and very tedious. And this is coming from someone who has like probably the easiest case aside from being married to a US citizen. So believe me when I say like, I know that even though my situation is annoyingly long, it really pales in comparison to a lot of immigration struggles that people in the US and people outside of the US are having right now. Now I will be making a full video breaking down my entire green card process from start to end because I think a lot of people get value from that. But if I did that right now, this video would be like 30 minutes long. And I will give you the quick summary from adjusting my status to getting my EAD. So April 17th, 2024, USCIS received my application for the advanced parole, EAD, and the green card. May 20th, 2024, I got a request for biometrics, which is basically just an eye scan and a finger scan. So I did the biometrics, I sent it to USCIS, and June 8th is when they received it. Now June 10th, it says we've ordered a new card and it's approved, but it says it twice, so I think it might be a little bit of a glitch. I'm not really sure, but on July 17th, it said the card is being shipped to me. And on July 26th is when I actually received the card in the mail. Now there is a couple of days where it could have actually came earlier because I was out of town, was not able to check the mail. So it might've came a day or two earlier than July 26th, but let's just say that it was July 26th because there's no way to know. So that means the total time from USCIS receiving my adjustment of status application and me getting the EAD in hand is about 98 days or over just three months, which is pretty fast in comparison to all things green card process. Now I just checked the USCIS website and it says that 80% of EAD applications get approved within six and a half months. 
Now, like I said, I've been looking pretty heavy on these immigration subreddits. And from what I've seen, the very small Reddit sample size, is that many people are getting their EAD right now, getting it very quickly, but the AP is not getting approved and it's taking a long time. And if you look at the estimates on USCIS, that kind of goes in line. Like the estimate for the EAD getting completed, 80% was done in six and a half months. For the advanced parole, it's looking like 12 and a half months. Now I also have a friend who went through the exact same process as me, just a little bit more recently and also in a different city. And for him, it took him eight months after applying for adjustment of status to get his EAD and his AP in hand. So again, based off my very limited sample size, my application looks like it's going okay so far. Now I've been pretty lucky to work at a pretty large company where there's a lot of Canadians. On top of that, I have a lot of friends who are Canadians, either kids from school or like mutuals or people that I meet here who are now working and living in the US. So for me, it's very easy to bounce ideas off of and you know get help and help each other in this whole entire process of immigration, software engineering, and personal finance, specifically for Canadians in the US. But for a lot of you watching, I can understand that that might not be the case. So that's why I'm making these videos, you know, sharing my journey, so hopefully it can help out some of you guys that are watching. Now, I also wanna note that we've recently launched a Discord channel where we talk about all things immigration, software engineering, personal finance. And if you're curious about that, I will leave a link in the description where you can join the Discord and also put it in the comments as well. Now, based off what I've said in this video, you might assume that getting the green card is like a no brainer and that everyone that's working in the US should strive for it. But one of my spiciest and my hottest takes is that it's not actually necessarily worth it for a lot of people. And if you're curious as to why I think that, you can watch this video right here where I go over some reasons to consider not getting your green card. 